I'm in the Centre for Doctoral Training in the Theory and Simulation of Materials. In my search for a PhD, I was looking for something that was actually very application focused because I wanted to do something that meant I could use the physics that I'd learnt at university and actually have some impact on a real world problem. So that's, that's what drew me towards Imperial and towards the CDT. It was so different to what I'd done before. Um, as an engineer you don't really get that much chance to do some real physics. Uh, a major deciding factor was the fact that I didn't actually know what PhD I wanted to do. I didn't have to choose my particular project or supervisors until the end of the first year. And what this meant was um, you really understand the topics, you get to know the supervisors over the year because you've had lectures with them. In fact, I, I proposed the project that I'm doing now. You get a really wide foundation of knowledge from the first year, which then carries forward really nicely into your PhD because you get so many different um, ideas that you wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, you can communicate really well with scientists across a complete spectrum of uh, disciplines. You generate so much confidence in yourself that you can feel like you can tackle a problem that somebody else might feel a bit stumped with. We all speak different languages, whether it be engineering, uh, material science or physics. And being able to uh, cope with a multidisciplinary environment is really important in whatever industry you go to. As well as all the academic work, you, you get loads of extra really cool things. You get to go on these amazing um, kind of self-discovery courses, basically, where you, where you get the chance to like, really improve yourself. Um, you, you get lots of different uh, socials with all the cohorts, which is really nice. Um, and there are a load of uh, what they call master classes, where they get lots of uh, experts and really big high flyers from industry. Uh, they come in and chat about their work for a bit, but then uh, you get to interrogate them at the pub afterwards with a few drinks. They really encourage you to do other things. So, for example, a few of us decided to organise um, a summer school and we got together and we found sponsors and we attracted students from, I think it was five continents in the end. And it was a really good um, success story. But they kind of allow you to do the things you want to do. There's a lot of flexibility, but there's also a real push. So you're pushed to do some really great science, but you're also pushed to do other things you find fun. So if you like communicating science, you're encouraged to go out there, interact with schools, and do things like that and so whatever you like to do they really push you to go and do it and be the best at it that you can be. We were encouraged to go on many different types of graduate skills training programs ones run by the university and ones actually designed by the CDT themselves so this has been uh, one of the best experiences of my life partly because of the professional development. So there's a, a real sense of community on the TSM CDT so when we have a new cohort arrive, each member of that gets assigned two buddies and you kind of look after them, take them for coffee, things like that. And we do a lot of events where we um, go for lunch or go to the pub with the different years. You have a good group of people, you get to know the academics really well, um, you get to know people who are in years above and below you quite well, there's, there's that support network there too. This is a really quite a good environment because you have a community of people who work in a field that's very similar to you. We've done some really fantastic things together. We, we um, built a, a, a tight binding molecular dynamics code for carbon from scratch. So it, it really is quite a friendship group and a group of people that I'm probably going to know for the rest of my life.